Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And over the course of this past weekend, we got to see, uh, well, we got to hear about some D23 footage of the Rise of Skywalker in the form of what is effectively being called the featurette, right? Some people have called it uh, a trailer. Have you seen the trailer? Well, it's not really much of a trailer now, is it? It's not much of a trailer at all when it's just uh, two minutes and 11 seconds that gives us a couple things to look at. And I thought it'd be fun to go through watch it, and then break down what new things we saw. Break down a couple things that I think are pretty cool. And one of the reasons why, like, you might be different than me, but I I cannot wait for this movie. I'm so freaking hyped. This featurette, uh, it, again, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. You play in my nostalgia heartstrings, you've got me. I've been open about that. So here we go. Take a look at this. Oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Original trilogy, man. We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. Nice. You gotta love it. You gotta you gotta love it. I'm sorry, you do. You gotta love that stuff. Anyway, let's take a look here at some of the uh, some of the breakdown shots. All right. So I mean, clearly starting off with the the twin sons of Tatooine, and one of the reasons why I thought this was great in regards to start the trailer off uh, is because I remember that shot, that moment of Luke looking out at the at the twin sons. You know, Luke here just kind of looking off into the distance, right? Of what is going to come, what adventures. Are going to come out. His life is ultimately going to change. Like this was uh, the sun setting on what he knew, and 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 what was going to be taking him down the hero's journey after that was just fantastic. I I've always loved that scene, and I did, you know, when they brought that up in in the Last Jedi, I was like, okay, obviously they're running parallels here because events in Star Wars have always been cyclical. A lot of things have meaning. A lot of things kind of find themselves coming back up again. So that's how I always interpreted that. But you can still just that look on Mark Hamill's face there of, 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 you know, looking at the two at the at the two sons and going, yeah, this is, you know, my life is going to change. And then we as the audience hearing the John Williams score swell, right? That's still here. It is nearly, you know, I'm 37 years old and that, that still brings it out of me every single damn time I hear it. It's just amazing. Getting a shot here of Leia. Being all badass, I, I just, you can't help but miss Carrie Fisher when you see this shot. Such an iconic thing. And uh, it just sucks that she's not here. And that's never going to go away. It's just never going to go away at all. But I love that they included this because it's, you know, her first real uh, iconic shot. Outside of, you know, putting the uh, uh, putting the, the the data thing into, sending giving the message to, to R2. Uh, get the first shot of Han Solo here. As he's uh, doing his thing. Just again, Harrison Ford, Han is always fantastic. Again, I love that they're really like invoking the the the, the original trilogy to kind of play on those nostalgic heartstrings. Uh, and of course, one of the last shots of A New Hope. Again, just what I love about this shot has always been uh, the music score for one and, and them taking on 
the empire and the resistance having a shot, right? There were the rebellion having a shot and the rebellion, you know, finally having its first real decisive win against them. Obviously, knowing what we know off of Rogue One, it kind of makes this scene a little bit more important. And again, you know, here it is 40 years later from this thing being released, and it's still one of the most iconic shots in, in cinema history. Uh, moving over into, uh, you know, the 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 Battle of Hoth, man, that it's still iconic as hell. We need more ad ads in our life. Just saying. Uh, getting that shot of Boba Fett. And he nods here. Obviously, this is from Turn of the Jedi. Uh, but he nods here, and it's almost like, I'm like wondering why they included Boba Fett into this. I think there's a reason why they included Boba Fett. It could be the Mandalorian tie-in. It could be that, but we we know according to Disney, Boba Fett's alive. But it's more like of a Schrodinger's Fett situation. We don't know, or we know he survived, but we don't know if he's alive or dead. So it's a weird thing. Uh, we get the, you know the iconic shot of Vader saying, "Luke, I am your father." And of course, just how that makes you feel every time you hear that one. And then it cuts over to the shot of Rey. Obviously, this is meant to be from The Force Awakens, her fighting Kylo. And it's kind of, you know, that first real moment of her kind of understanding her power and understanding her abilities, at least, you know, being a novice in them. And just, again, the way that the, the shot looks, the visual representation of it all, uh, blue versus red, light versus dark, it is still iconic in its own right. JJ really did bring it on that front. And then we see everyone here. Chewie, Finn, Ray, Poe, and C-3PO not seeing any of the, uh, uh, not seeing any of the droids, but there is a Millennium Falcon, what appears to be off to the other side of that rock over there, if you guys can see that real quick. C-3PO, again, looks like he just has both of his arms, not one being red. And Poe, Poe still looks like Nathan Drake from Uncharted 3. I, I don't know how no one in the costuming department knew that at all. Uh, and then they're here, wherever the hell this is. I have no idea. Uh, I mean, this is like when they showed the reverse shot of that and you see this village, this town of people, it's just like, holy crap, what exactly is going on? I have no freaking idea, but I, I, I'm really intrigued as to why they're there. I'm really intrigued as to why it seemed like this is a massive party going on because you see some stuff like what appears to be like dust fireworks going off and everything. Uh, we get the shot here of Leia again. This is all unused footage from episode seven. It just makes you miss her, man. That she's got that little sly smile, that little you can see a little bit. It's meant to be that smile, the the way that only Leia could. Uh, just uh, it's gonna be difficult. I swear. Uh, this shot is dope. I don't know what's going on. This to me says this is leading into the final battle because we know it's been like a few years past the Last Jedi, a few years past everything. Uh, this is clearly what's left of the Resistance or what they've been able to cobble together. We see a couple Y wings. Uh, I think there's an A wing up there, a couple X wings. There's a, a B wing. Uh, actually, there's a few B wings that I see. Obviously, these are the iconic. This, this this is what I think it is. I think this right here, because you've got the blockade buster right there, it's a Corellian ship. Uh, but what I think this is, I think because you know the resist the the, the the rebellion had all those ships, and those ships probably got decommissioned over the span of thirty years. This might be what they've got. This might be what they've got left. They found an old cache. An old, an old, an old uh, supply depot of of you know of rebellion ships, and this is what they use to mount the final assault against whatever the hell this thing is. I have no freaking idea what the hell this thing is. Uh, what 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 this or this is meant to represent? All I know is it's like I saw that and I was all damn, damn boy, what is happening here? I have no idea. Super intrigued by it, uh, but I do feel that this, if I'm being fair, feels like more of a dream sequence because th that's like, a th you know, almost infinite storm, uh, you know, uh, Star Destroyers, kind of like the infinite clone room that we saw uh, with with Ray in The Last Jedi. Um, so it could be anything. But then again, we get the shot here of Finn and uh, I forget her name, but this is Lando's daughter. And uh, that could be Rose Tico's hands in the, uh, piloting the Millennium Falcon right there. Uh, or no, the, whoever they've got in that thing. I don't, it's not Rose Tico. Where's Rose, where, where is Rose Tico? She's gone. She's gone throughout this entire thing, right? They brought Kelly Marie Tran to Celebration and to D23 in none of the marketing material. Uh, she's been there. I should probably maybe do a video about that. Actually, I probably will. Uh, C-3PO looking like he just smoked the fattest of blondes. Like he just partied with Snoop D O W G. I don't know what this is. Um, but it's already spawned a thousand memes and, uh, by all means, let it go. Uh, this, so this shot's great. This is clearly going to be Ray training. 
And uh, this could be her on Endor. The trees look a little bit like Endor, even though that was meant that was shot in the Redwoods in California. The major trees is this kind of look a little bit like Endor, but she's got a training uh, remote right there, a little remote droid, kind of like Luke had in A New Hope, which is pretty cool. And she's uh, she's throwing that thing out there and she's catching it here. Uh, one handed catching it. So this is, but look at her outfit too. The outfit is the, the, the hoodie V neck thing or the, the, the popped collar V neck thing she's got going on. So I think this is once she gets down to wherever they're going to be looking for remnants of the death star, which I do believe is going to be considered Endor. I wouldn't be surprised if JJ takes us back to Endor. He does like to play the cyclical themes a bit. Uh, even if that's considered a detriment to the franchise, he likes to do that. We have this great shot of Kylo landing somewhere. What appears to be, in the snow um, with his uh, with his own uh, thing. And then he pulls out uh, his own ship and he's got the, the the classic saber there. And then we get this iconic shot of them fighting uh, on on what is. Oh, 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 I just realized where they are. The trench run. They are because look at the look at the gunner off to the right there off to the left. Right. This that's the gun. That's the turret gun uh, on top of the Death Star. This is on top of a, a piece of the Death Star. Uh, this is like where the trenches are from a new hope. This is going to be where they're fighting. Uh, that's pretty cool. Actually, that's pretty dope. And then of course we have this shot here of Darth Ray, which everyone has been kind of losing their mind over this morning. And, uh, this great shot of, of her with the double-sided lightsaber. And my person, my personal take on it is this, um, given the CG, whether the CG, uh, is done or not, I have no idea. The reflection there, very similar to the situation in, um, in Empire Strikes Back when Luke went into the cave to face his, his, his worst nightmare. And to him, his worst nightmare uh, was Vader, which then, you know, have him turning into Vader was a fear. Little did we know that was kind of more of a subconscious, like, Hey, this is my dad. And maybe I just kind of figured it out a little bit early sort of thing, or at least telling the audience that, but here she gets the rock, the dual saber. I'm hoping there's a reference to Maul. I know Maul and at this point in time is dead for real, uh, but his saber could be, you know, modeled after and whatnot. It looks pretty great. I I am just super hyped to see what they do with it. And of course, the Rise of Skywalker comes out December twentieth, two thousand nineteen. And like I said before, guys, it's it's a great time to be a Star Wars fan right now. It's a great time to be a Star Wars fan. This little featurette, while not showing much, opened up a lot more questions, and a lot more questions of interest, especially coming off of. The Last Jedi, where the trailer for The Last Jedi was pretty fantastic. I will I will admit the trailers completely misled us. Disney's marketing team did a great job, but you can't help terrible word of mouth, which is ultimately what killed Solo and kept The Last Jedi from breaching two billion. This movie, if it's any better than The Last Jedi, will clearly go on to, I think, get real close to two billion, if not cross it itself. I do think it will do that. But it also appears like J.J. is giving the fans a lot of what they want and, and, and really trying to wrap up storylines coming off of the last Jedi, which didn't give us a lot of storylines, which, which didn't do a lot there to really kind of make us feel like we were part of a grander story. It just felt like a single isolated chapter, which is not what you want in a saga with three movies. That is unless they, 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 they tease us all. And this isn't actually the end that this is actually just the end of Skywalker's, but it's not going to be the end of the First Order, which could lead into an episode 10. I don't think that's going to happen. Not one, not, not by a long shot. This movie is already rumored to be clocking in at just about three hours long, the longest of all Star Wars films, but it's got a lot of story to tell, a lot of ground to cover, and a lot of mistakes to retcon. So with any luck, we'll get something great and something fantastic. I'm excited. I want to know what you guys have to think about this. Let me know down in the comments below. I look forward to your thoughts and your theories and be sure to hit me up on facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash three buck theater. You guys can get in on the action, get in on the conversations, post some memes if you got them because they're always fun. Or if you want to talk to me directly, if you want to say, Matt, I hate you. I hate your stuff. I think you're awesome. <laughs> Anything like that. Come to Hollywood After Dark right here on this channel, Monday to Thursday, 11 p.m. PST. And yeah, thank you so much. Please be sure to hit like, hit subscribe and check back often for more content for me. Have yourself a great day, guys, and may the force be with you.